great to see people laughing, you know. Hard laugh nowadays, all the news. And this, uh, this Persian Gulf thing has got me real worried. And, and I feel so ignorant because what are these, you know, Iraq and Iran, for instance. What are these people fighting about, you know? It's like, it ends with a Q. <laughs> it ends with an N. <laughs> these people are one letter away from peace. Talk about being bothered, and that's where you get your material from. Mm -hmm. When you do comedy, there's also a fine line between offending people with your brand of comedy yeah. and making wow. people laugh. Well, Bill Cosby said it best, you know. He said, listen, I don't know the secret to success, mm -hmm. but the secret to failure is trying to please everyone. And I'm telling you what, when you do comedy, someone will be bothered. No, I don't care what you talk about. You know, you could say, you know, the other day I was blowing up a balloon, and somebody in the audience was, hey, I breathe air, pal, watch it. You know, they, I don't care what you talk about. There's so many people, and especially now with the Internet and social media, right. you're reaching so many people, right. somebody's going to be bothered, so you can't worry about that. Any memorable act? Well, you know, it's interesting with comedians. If the show goes well, uh -huh. right, you remember it for about 10 minutes. If it goes bad, right. you remember it for the rest of your life. Really? So all I ever remember are the the bad ones. The bad ones. Okay, share. Well, <laughs> I was a, I was opening for Tom Jones at Trump uh, uh, in. Um, at the Trump Hotel or whatever it was called. In Las Vegas? No, no, in um, Florida or Miami okay, right. or somewhere on the East Coast. I okay. can't remember. But anyway, I got up there and they just weren't buying it. It was one of those things oh, where... Oh, that is so difficult. Well, you have to understand, they come there to see Tom Jones, ladies right. and gentlemen, what? Yay! And now the comedy of Andy Bumathai. And you walk <laughs> out and they go, they literally, they go, ah. And there's like, there's five deep, with Rose? cameras oh, okay. in the front, right. and then I walk on, they go, uh, and they all turn around and walk up, and I oh went, my, you oh my, you've been so God. excited well, walking in. Yeah, and then you get used to it, because, right. and then what you do is you go backstage and smell the paycheck and go, okay, this is why I'm doing it. <laughs> but Tom is a wonderful person. I mean, I can't say enough about what a cool guy he is. So even when working with comedy, it's still stressful? Oh, every, well, any kind of performance, as you know. Right. You know, you sit here and you look great, and oh, look, she's so glib. It's so easy, but yeah. you know, no, it's not easy. That right. you yeah. know, that, yeah. and especially if you're doing what I do more of today, which is interview people. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't realize when you're interviewing how you have to listen and think, and what's next, right. and how you connect, mm -hmm. and and that uh, you know, it's a talent. It takes stress. So tell me about this. Uh, be acting, going to LA, mm -hmm. making it big, doing shows, doing movies, and then mm -hmm. coming back to Hawaii. Is it just the love for Hawaii? Well, it, yes, and it was my wife and I, well, she was my girlfriend, and then the kids came along, and, you know, we got married, and then um, when they got to school age, I wanted them to grow up here and not in L.A. I had this nightmare that my kid would turn to me one day and go, Whoa, Dad, like, gag me with a spoon, you know, and I went, Whoa, you know, so. <laughs> and maybe we'll be twerking for you. Well, also, too, you know, I wanted them to be somewhat in touch with their culture, you know, the Hawaiian side, the Filipino side, uh, mostly. The German side, you know, I'm not even in touch with, right? Mm -hmm. Although I have uncles that look like Hitler's wet dream, you know what I mean? But Hitler's wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, but anyway, uh, but so I wanted them to, to understand some of the of their culture. So and that takes place here. You know? That must have been a sacrifice for your part too, though, because you yeah. had a great career yeah. and then you just turned your back. How? You know, was that easy? Turning your back on a career? We see a lot mm -hmm. of these. Hollywood stars that are just hooked on popularity and fame and will do anything just to get in the news. Well, I think a lot has to do with, with, with my Filipino heritage because family first. I think most 
Filipinos feel that way. I don't care what the deal is. If you have to decide between your family and anything else, they will go to the family. And I decided I didn't want to be Uncle Daddy. I didn't want to be the guy who calls in. I wanted to be there, and I wanted to be active. In, and, and now, as a result, I have very famous friends who have no connection whatsoever with their children. And I'm not so famous compared to these mega stars. And my kids and I can sit down and have dinner and laugh and talk. And I think that's more valuable. So no regrets? No regrets. And now your transition to TV. How difficult mm -hmm. or easy was it? Well, you know, television, I've always been on television. But to be on the production, production side, side of it is, is very difficult. And, you know, it's, it's always about money. Um, and not having enough of it to do really what you want, you know. And then there's the trade-off on how much are you going to work on this thing and not have a life. Right. You know, but I enjoy it. Have you found the balance yet? Um, yes. I could probably do more exercise. I'm gaining weight because I'm sitting at a computer and eating, eating, and eating and editing right. and doing all this stuff. Right. And, and it's hard to let it go when you have deadlines, you know. And... Uh, I I'm getting better.